So today uh, we're having a, a bit of a different episode. This is probably the first time we're doing this. And this is uh, Kirsty's idea. So really, and I think I'm going to adopt it from now on and have some episodes like this. Uh, so there's, it's not the usual, tell me about your background and did you study translation languages? What did you do? Blah, blah, blah. But it's more of a, a conversation between friends uh, about our perspective on a uh, subject. And this time, we have Kirsty and Kirsty Wolf. I love her name. She is actually an English teacher, coach, anything you want. I have something beeping all over the place for some reason that I don't understand. Oh, I know what to do. Wait a second. All right, here we go. So now it should be okay. Uh, so that's it. So Kirsty and I are going to talk about foreign languages and the importance and the impact that they have in your life. So this is the subject that I discuss and talk about <laughs> multiple times uh, with anybody I can, because it's just um, a great passion for me due to the fact that English had, uh, I would say, the, the, the greatest impact of all the things I've ever tried to learn in my life, because all the jobs that I've had, all the things that I do have to do with speaking English. So I thought it was going to be a great subject. Kirsty and I thought it was going to be a great subject for us to, to just talk about a little bit and to give you our perspective. And I'm sure you're going to find uh, interesting points and things that you can actually see for yourself in your experience when learning a foreign language. So let's just see who this woman is. So just talk a little bit about yourself. This part is just, I have to keep it right so that everybody gets to know you better. Tell me yeah, a little sure. bit about yourself. <laughs> Something about <laughs> Kirsty Wolf. Okay, I am Kirsty Wolf. I work with people who want to improve their English. So whether that's people who are right at the beginning of this journey, I don't have very many of those, but there are some to people who want to come on language courses, um, mainly for their for their jobs. I have some um, company language courses and and a lot of people who just want to have the confidence to use English more um naturally and to sound like themselves because I think that's one of the things that I learned as a language learner I speak German and a couple of years ago I started learning Romanian so my German is better than my Romanian but I speak both and that's really hard at the beginning to be yourself mm -hmm. to be the person who you are to say things in the way that you would say them to react in the way that you would react and in another language sometimes it, it can go both ways sometimes people just well English speakers just fill in, in the gaps with English and I don't do that because I think like I, I failed if I've done that I have to do it properly in the other language mm -hmm. but the other way is to do what I do and just kind of shut down a bit and if I have an idea and I don't know how to say it then I won't say it or I'll just observe and observing mm -hmm. is fine at the beginning but if you really want to develop good relationships with people whether that's as a friend or in a business context you can't just sit there and say nothing because people think you have nothing to say and I have a lot to say, and that's really frustrating. The more you talk, the more difficult it is when you're learning another language to be yourself in that other language, because you talk a lot, and then you have to learn how to say all those things in the other language. And it's frustrating, and I know that it, it can improve. I, I've worked on two languages, and I've got them to a, the point where I you know, think in those languages and, mm -hmm. and interact in those languages, not entirely as I would in English, but it's getting there. And I know that I can help people on that journey. So that's what I do. Yeah, I'm an English teacher, but I don't just <laughs> sit and teach English. It's about being yourself in English because it's so important if you want people to, to know who you are. And if you want to, if you're a business owner and you want to talk about your products or services, you can't mm -hmm. get people to know, like, and trust you if you're the face of their biz your business and they, they don't know anything about you because you're so you play it safe you don't say the things that you would normally say because you're not sure how to do it so I, I help people on that journey yeah so I I can see myself in that because <laughs> <laughs> of course I, I usually talk a lot mm -hmm. so for me it would totally be impossible to I mean it would be very frustrating and very hard to just imagine myself in that position where I would be able to just express myself in the other language. Of course, that the only languages that I speak are languages that have been in my life for a long time. And that gives me a bit of an advantage. But at the same time, I didn't have that advantage at birth, right? I looked for it because, you know, everybody knows I'm a Madonna fan. Madonna always behind me or somewhere <laughs> visible. <laughs> but the thing is that I felt that need of actually investing in my English at a really young age where I obviously didn't have a job in mind, <laughs> right? And I think that's what really helped 
in my case, to develop this very specific, specific and very emotional connection that I have with English, because it's like, like I always say, the thing that transformed and shaped my life the most, because everything that I do, I try to do in English. If I read a book, I'll read in English. If I sing a song, I'll sing in English. This is basically what I do is to dedicate myself, not because I'm, I have a goal necessarily in mind. Well, now is a bit more, you know, educated, you know, I'm more educated in my choices. And I try to, for example, watch things that will give me an advantage. And by that, I mean reality shows, for example. <laughs> <laughs> they are educational. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> I get sometimes a bit uh, criticized for that. But the truth is that I'm very open about the crap TV that I watch. Because it's where I feel that I could learn the most. So this is what I do. Sometimes I'm not even interested on that, you know, love island that they have, you know, people falling in love with each other or whatever it is because they're, they're all stuck in a house. And that's the only option that they have is to fall in love with each other, things like that. But sometimes because I love the, the whole the whole palette of flavors of Spanish, for example. So how else am I going to have, you know, any kind of contact with Colombian Spanish or with Mexican Spanish or whatever it is, right? So I just look at TV as my means of keeping things a little bit more fresh. But in the beginning, you're absolutely right. I mean, what, what's going to happen for you that can break the ice, right? What's going to happen? And I think that the real trick is for you to understand how it works and how it works for you to learn something and in particular a language and then to develop on that. I am a person who is very in love, very much in love with grammar. <laughs> me too, because it helps me to avoid the mistakes that I'm really trying so hard not to make. And if I of understand course. how it works, then... I mean, how was your experience? Let's talk about something that is not English because it's a whole other beast, right? How was it, especially as an English speaker? So you English pe speakers don't have the need that at least I've always felt that my English had to be there on point because I needed it for this, for that, blah, blah, blah. So how is it for you speaking the dominant language of the world, right? To be interested in other languages, how is the process? Because it's very different, right? I'm sure than uh, for someone who's not from an English speaking country. What happened with German, for example? I get bored with English all the time. That's <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah, everybody, you know, it's a it's a global language, but it was boring. And I think I think at school, because I started with French and I, I did mm -hmm. well in French, but I've forgotten it all now. It's kind of useful looking at the, the grammar for the, some of the languages that I'm looking mm -hmm. at now. But yeah, I, I kind of abandoned it. But with German, I think the beginning for me was A, that it was something that I was good at at school. I mean, I was I enjoyed school mm -hmm. apart from maths, but I... <laughs> I, I like school, but there were things that I was better at. And I think we we sometimes try hard, or I do, I really focus on the things that I'm enjoying and that I may be good mm -hmm. at and, and neglect the things that I really should invest time in if I want to have all the, the results the same. But um, <laughs> I enjoy, it's a really bad way to do it. But it's, you know, if I feel passionate about something and interested mm -hmm. in something, then I do that thing. Um, and with German, I think it helped that I quite early on found some German speaking friends. And so for me, language is always connected with people and interactions and communicating. Mm -hmm. So whilst I did read a lot of books and consume a lot of information to build my vocabulary and because I was genuinely interested, I also had the opportunity to interact with people. Um, and some, some people came to visit us. One of my friends who didn't really speak English and she didn't really speak German so even with my limited school German I was mm. in a better position to help those people to communicate but also to be involved because people said oh do you want to be an interpreter and I was no I talk too much I want, I want to be part of the conversation I can't do that um so that's why I didn't become an interpreter or a translator because Oof. whilst they're interesting things to do you don't get to speak and write and, and I needed that but mm -hmm. I, I did enjoy this experience of being able to do something useful and using language to, to help people. And I found it interesting, like, oh, how do I how do I communicate what that person just said in, in English or in German um, in a way that makes sense? Or, you know, do I need to explain something that wouldn't make sense to somebody who doesn't speak that language? And I found it fascinating. So that's why I continued with German. Mm -hmm. But then I think as an adult, there are different things to think about because at school it's very structured you go to your classes you learn yeah. you pass the exams you go on to something else with I had a couple of full starts with other languages for example my Turkish I got quite yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand 
well, I don't know if I still do understand, but at the time. Oh, wow, I didn't know about this one. I was going to ask <laughs> about something else, but I didn't know about this well, one. Well, the surprises. I, I, I know, I know. That's what I say about you. You don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> It's on the internet, it's true now. Um, you, <laughs> with Turkish, I never spoke. I refused to speak. I, I had to speak with my teacher, but I always distracted her with questions about grammar so that she had to explain <laughs> stuff. And then there was no time for spontaneous speaking. How sad. I didn't have to do so it. So you that manipulated way. that. <laughs> yeah, I was a nightmare. Teachers are the worst to teach because we know all the tricks. Um, but when I started with Romanian, I decided I didn't want to be like that because that's it's not good to be Let's able get, to. I have to ask, I have to ask. Why Romanian? Because it's like, <laughs> why all of a sudden I understand the German, of course, you know, same family of languages, blah, blah, blah. It would be useful. Everybody knows it's one of the things that I'd love the most. If I could just magically start speaking a language, should, I would have no start. doubt. It would be, uh, as everybody knows, German and then Arabic. Those are my fantasy languages. What can I do? I just, the sound of it is just insane to me. So um, I like, music. Too- I, I actually listen to Rammstein, right? In German. And I really enjoy it. So I'm one of those people. <laughs> but the truth is that I don't, I, because of the way um, how I see languages, it's really hard for me to do that because I see it as a full-blown investment of, or your, you know, all the guns that you have should be out for that. And I don't see how I would manage at this point. So I'll just leave it there, leave it there. But now talking about you. <laughs> What was the story with this Romanian? Because, I mean, it's not necessarily something that you think of immediately when we talk about languages. And also, that's why I want to invite people on the podcast that speak other languages, because I realize how much I've been focused on British people. <laughs> you like, oh, way. my God. <laughs> yes, you're British, but, you know, it's just from a, a different perspective, because we, let's see what you have to say about learning a language that is so different from your family of languages that you speak originally. What happened there and what was the motivation? That is insane to me. Well, it's not entirely different because I mean, French grammar, there were some things that that made sense to me because I had French at school, even though I've forgotten it, but that wasn't part of the decision. It was really, I wanted to learn another language. I thought it would be helpful for me as somebody who teaches languages to go back into that position where you think, oh, I don't want to speak to anyone. Um, But I also, I hadn't decided which one. So I was looking at different languages and I, I hadn't decided, but I went to a business networking meeting in English. Mm-hmm. Um, and the two people there that made me feel welcome and were friendly to me were, were Romanian speakers. I was like, okay, well, I know nothing about Romanian. That could be interesting. And it went oh, well. there. I just <laughs> I just needed that inspiration. Um, and then I I started, I didn't want to make the same mistakes as I'd made in Turkish. So I, I knew that I would have to speak and I don't speak a lot at the beginning. There are different ideas on this, but I think it's okay to do what I do as long as I know that at some point I'm going to have to speak. Because if I feel that I don't have anything in- interesting or intelligent to say, then I don't really want to speak just to practice the, you know, three sentences that I've just learned with somebody who, you know, that's that's great. Like, but you can't really have a conversation with that. Um, so I did really work at finding opportunities to learn and to speak because if you're learning a language that isn't the main language in your country then you Mm -hmm. have to be more proactive so Mm -hmm. I found I found friends I found people that I actually wanted to speak with and sometimes that was I did speak English and one of my friends she spoke Romanian and we sent each other voice messages she just told me about her day her dog her Mm -hmm. job what she cooked what she did you know just really basic stuff but in doing that every message was an opportunity for me to learn something Mm-hmm. um about how native speakers use their language because I think that was really important for me I don't want just just try and create some crazy sentences that that maybe people understand but are not correct I really want to observe how other people use their language and from that develop a, a feeling and intuition for what sounds right mm-hmm. and once I know that then I can start thinking that language and, and have an idea of what's going to sound okay but what was the first step that's what I don't understand um the first step was right finding a course ah. and then <laughs> but the course didn't really work out um for a number of reasons but one of which was because the the, the trainer had to disappear for uh, several months and so yeah. was it uh, uh, just a one-on-one <laughs> thing or was it a group no, thing it was a one-on-one or... online thing um I think you can that's my clock it does that every hour that's okay <laughs> <laughs> one-on-one thing because I I think I wanted to learn quickly and I don't enjoy I mean I think one-on-one is really good anyway but I don't enjoy the first part of learning a new language Mm -hmm. 
because I mean it's fascinating to see how it works and to, to begin to understand but I don't enjoy that feeling of incompetence so I wanted to get through that you know first bit um so that I could start having conversations ah, so you started by having private lessons so that you know you would feel more comfortable in developing while we were still at an early stage yeah and then and then the teacher disappeared so I had to, to find another one and then I and that was an interesting process because I started speaking with a number of different people and language exchanges they can also be good it's hard at the mm -hmm. beginning because it is a bit boring well I know as a language teacher I don't think it is as somebody doing it in every time it can be boring speaking to a complete beginner so you need someone either with patience or with a problem mm. that you can solve so that it's a fair exchange <laughs> um but now I think ultimately the best way is, is to have friends who only use that language with you like I've got a friend who she speaks English, but she never speaks English with me. We always speak Romanian because that's our language for communication. Yeah. So find reasons, find people to communicate mm -hmm. with. So what about music and movies and the usual thing that we do for English? Did you use any of those strategies that I'm sure that your your students would use in yeah, their journey? Music. Sometimes movies, not so much because... Um, <laughs> Romanian production. <laughs> I don't know, they're hard to find, but also um, podcasts were more uh -huh. helpful um so i found podcasts i found um some stuff on youtube which is about as intellectually stimulating as your reality tv but it was good for the same reasons you see was... you see i'm right <laughs> <laughs> it works for me it yeah, works for you it was just stuff people that you know creators on youtube just talking mm -hmm. about everyday stuff and I, I watched quite a lot of that around christmas did time you did you watch like uh movie uh, mm -hmm. not movies but uh, videos on youtube about you know verbs and developing your vocabulary or you just no. went into the you didn't no because also because it's really hard maybe for, for english there is a lot more content but some of mm -hmm. it's kind of questionable and not very good with romanian there just wasn't a lot there, there were a couple of people who were creating some some good content but i i guess because of the the number of learners um mm. there isn't so much um with things like series or movies i have to um i'm unable to see what's going on so i need to take your time take your time and have some water don't if worry i don't understand the dialogue then i can't uh, i can't understand what's going on so that doesn't feel like a good time investment for me there's a lot of action mm. whereas if there is a lot of dialogue and i'm able to understand that then that's a better investment so because I can't read subtitles mm -hmm. that doesn't help me so I need to get past that early stage where I don't understand what's going on if I want to enjoy any content so that's like also a good motivator for me to to learn and to improve because mm, I can't true. rely on that so <laughs> that's right but did you did you go through like lists of words lists of uh, verb conjugations things like that that are more classic no. in the way that we learn <laughs> I didn't do any of that I I like reading. I mean, I I need to make notes because if I mm -hmm. don't, I will forget things. If if I want to learn, I need to type it. So when I went to lessons, I made my own vocabulary list, things that I didn't want to forget, things that were important for me. And that's important as well, because if you just take a, a list of words, they're not important to you, they're not relevant. But if you mm -hmm. have a list, I do that with my clients, you know, a list of words that they needed and didn't have, things that they yeah. wanted to say but couldn't, then that's going to be more relevant and, and a more useful yeah. time investment yeah. because you're probably going to need them again. You needed them today. So it's things that you wanted to talk about. Um, so I think it's good to, to focus on things that are interesting for you. I, I did quite a lot of business vocabulary because I started quite early. I went to networking meetings in Romanian and felt like a, oh, it's so hard the first time when I know that I'm relatively articulate in English and then trying to explain what my social media strategy was going to be for the next year or so in, in Romanian. I was like, oh, wow. Don't, don't ask me mm. because we had breakout rooms. That was easier. But at the same time, it was very difficult to, to be there. Most people said, do you want to do this in English? And I said, no, I'm here to speak Romanian, but you're going to have to know that I would have said a lot more in English because you know. I have to but you have to be stronger than most of us when you are an English speaker because I mean English speakers talk about this phenomena everywhere that we, when they travel when they go somewhere everybody is like <laughs> don't even give them the chance to practice the local language or whatever it is because everybody just wants to practice their English and it's just so much easier to, to just jump into English and solve everything with it 
so I one really has to to be understanding. <laughs> that you can really ruin someone's day like that because yeah. <laughs> for you it's just thinking that you're doing something you know time efficient and, and helpful. But for them it's like I wanted to try and, and you obviously think that I'm yeah. not good enough to try. So exactly why bother? But so how but would also you... a lot of English people don't speak other languages. So, I mean, come on, the reason why a lot of people do that is because they know that the other person isn't going to be able to speak. English people don't have a, a great reputation for language learning, do we? Yeah, yeah. but I, I find that a little <laughs> bit um, annoying at the moment because I have been talking to a lot of people. Obviously, I only talk to people who work in the language industry. That's true. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but still, their backgrounds in that respect are a little bit more interested interesting than I expect <laughs> just because they, they really dedicate themselves and uh, they don't have this motivation that we have that to understand the universal language so they probably have to go to greater lengths to actually uh, learn and find materials and all that that you're describing for your Romanian experience so I'm just wondering how do you rate your Romanian at the moment because I know you're very strict and and you're very hard on yourself so what is your evaluation of your Romanian performance uh, I'd say after about a year and a half uh -huh. hmm, B2 C1 my my oh I wasn't expecting official <laughs> great an English teacher okay so I can I can watch things and understand them without really thinking about it when I speak I have to think a bit more I can I can talk to a friend for a couple of hours in Romanian and not feel like as stressed as I, I used to. But you and, mean and the, we, the coffee shop talks, talks that I keep talking about? Yeah, and we have normal like... conversations about uh -huh. about everything in Romanian and, and they're unplanned. Like, and I, I do stick to Romanian. I don't want to, I mean, if I, if I don't know a word, I'm, I'm not too proud to ask, but I, I, I won't try and explain something in English. If, if I don't know how to do it, I'll... I'll use what I have and, and find different words. And, but you can do that after a while. I think at the beginning, one of the, I didn't have a fair fear of speaking. I had a frustration with having nothing to say. And I think <laughs> you, know, you have to get through that. Once you do, then you can enjoy the language a bit more. And I think that's maybe the reason why a lot of people give up because that the first mm -hmm. part is the hardest, but then you can really start to have fun and build meaningful friendships and use that language as a way to communicate with other people. And I've forgotten the question. What did you ask? <laughs> oh, how do I rate my yeah. women? Mm. I understand more than I I can, a higher level of language content than I can produce myself. But I think that's that's normal, isn't it, to, to do that? I guess but I'm, normal. I'm kind of satisfied that I've got there. I, I still have a lot to learn and a lot that I want to do. But I think I'm at the point now where I can meet new people and talk to them and not feel so self-conscious mm. do you feel like you can be yourself fully because I have no, that. I fully. feel like I have different personalities uh slightly different personalities <laughs> with each uh language because yeah, I think do. I'm a bit more formal in Portuguese I would say formal maybe that's not the word but maybe I'm I'm, I'm slower I think in thinking in Portuguese just because it's like my practical life is, is much more in English than it is in Portuguese. So I guess I'm, especially now, strangely enough, now that I'm not even at the office, I don't, I'm not supposed to have meetings as such. But the truth is that I think I have been speaking English a lot more than before, which is really even more than before, which is really a, a blessing because in all my jobs, I had to speak English on site all the time. So do you feel like you already have your personality, your, your fully realized Kirsty personality when you speak Romanian or do you think that will take a little bit more steps? I'm still step getting to know her because <laughs> Kirsty in, in English or German is, is more direct, more kind of outspoken, is quicker. But with the, the Romanian, I guess it's because of the, the cultural aspects as well. Like a lot of the Romanian speakers that I know are more a lot more open than they the are English people, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah like I don't know I had a client a Romanian client who came here to England and she said that it was actually really difficult to get to, to know English people sometimes hmm. Hmm. okay I, I wasn't expecting that necessarily <laughs> <laughs> no we're just being open to share about how you how you feel about things being more demonstrative being more and I think it's fun to explore that part of Kirsty when she speaks Romanian it's, it's kind of fun it's, it's nice but I think that's also to do with the, 
the connections that you make when you use the language as well as the language itself. But culturally, is it a country that interests you at all or not even? Yeah, no, I think it does because I've made friends there now. I, I worked so hard and I started, we had lockdown here in the uh -huh. UK and, and couldn't leave your house. And, you, and I wanted to do something useful with that time. So that was another reason I was feeling a bit, um, not so much isolated because I have a, a good network of, of people with whom I communicate online and, and they're not local anyway so like me I, but I'm new to your life yeah. <laughs> I'm not a lockdown product <laughs> <You're not. laughs> but we still manage to speak most days I don't even understand how it happened for the first time but hey well, something about Jane either. I'm sure Jane Eggers <laughs> these things happen and you don't always understand them Yes, that's what I like. I like things I don't understand, sort of. <laughs> so I've heard, however, and it, it just came out in a conversation or, or a post or something that you, you posted recently, that you are also learning Portuguese. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's new. And what's I'm happening not gonna... in there? What's happening is that I started a course and I'm not going to talk to you at least till after Christmas. And then... <laughs> I mean, you can trust me, can you not? <laughs> no, when you're recording a podcast, I can't. No, no, not, not at the moment. You don't no. have to do it in public like that, but I mean in private because you... No, you, I, you I don't think I would so. because, because we talk about so many other things and I don't want to... I think that's that's my problem as a, as a language learner and something that I tell my, my clients not to do, but very few of my clients are starting with English right, right at the beginning. And as I said, I, I don't enjoy this beginning stage. But I, that's how I want to get past it, you know. Yes, I know, to... but it, it's interesting to me because, as you know, I'm, I consider myself, you consider yourself an English teacher and trainer. And the, the word I use for myself is what I told you before, it's mentor. So I, I a mentor for English and for Portuguese. So I'm more than interested in knowing what your, let's say, needs are, your interests and all that. Because I'm actually thinking, like I told you before, about doing a series of videos, right? And I want to do stuff for beginners, for Portuguese, and then I want to do things for advanced learners, which is a lot more natural to me, right? Because the idea is just to act natural <laughs> mm -hmm. and then reflect on the content and just, uh, you know, learn from it. But I will somehow have a basic structure. That's the idea. Go to a restaurant or having a conversation, something like that. And then just go from there. But the question is what to do for beginners, right? Is it something that I should do in English and then uh, add just the relevant Portuguese words, but the whole explanation is in English? Should it be directly in Portuguese? So I'm considering all of these things. And if you are a Portuguese learner, this is exactly what I need in my life <laughs> to have that kind of feedback. And also, if you want to practice at some point, whenever you trust me for that, then I'm... I trust you and I trust myself. To do <laughs> you don't have to, to trust your Portuguese, right? Because that's the idea if you're learning. And it's amazing to watch that process for someone like me who thinks about languages 24-7. That's all I think about. That's all I talk about. So, I mean seeing the process i'm at the moment i'm i'm watching the process because my my child is now super young and is still learning how to speak so i'm looking at that with you know uh very interested eyes but of course as a, an adult you have other challenges and i do want to hear your experience about your experience and what you go through especially in a language that i can speak right? <laughs> and that i can teach then it's very different because we could talk about your romanian experience and all that but because i don't know romanian then i wouldn't have specific problems that i could focus on or ask you about but for portuguese is very different but i do understand that it's not the day that we're talk about that. but speaking about romania i think that will help me because now i mean i've, I've listened to some of your content i, I read yeah. things on linkedin and i and I, I don't have them translated. I try to, to figure it out, but there are things that make sense to so me. So you have heard the I... podcast in Portuguese? Yes. <laughs> <For the> episode... <laughs> oh. But I think there, I mean, I, I don't understand yet, but there are there are parts of sentences that I do understand because I speak Romanian, not because of, you know, any of my other languages. The roots, right? The common roots. Yeah, the, the grammar makes like some parts of grammar make sense because you oh yeah we do that in Romanian so that's okay but so I hope that that will help me to make faster progress because I already have this foundation and you know some some words are similar and even if if they're a bit different I I know what it means because uh -huh. I know a similar word in Romanian so that helps 
Or yeah. maybe it doesn't because there might be some <laughs> well, close it, friends. It might confuse that. you. <laughs> well, it depends on what kind of person you are. Some people have trouble if they learn Spanish and Italian or Italian and Portuguese or Spanish and Portuguese, and that might be difficult. But I mean, it depends on who you are, obviously. It always depends on who you are, in my opinion, because of like saying things about we learn in a certain way. And like my my son is not actually following the the specific <laughs> sounds and patterns that you're supposed to learn in a specific order, like the vast majority of children. So for me, it was like a big eye opening that I have to think about it from yet another perspective because I try to put myself in from you know look at it from many points of view because it's something even philosophically uh even from a religious point of view right I, I look for those stories that have anything to do with languages and with language uh as such because that's something that interests interests me from every point of view so what kind of people actually approach you for the English classes what is their philosophy their idea on languages what are their fears what are they what are they thinking is it because they need it is it because they want it is it a mix of things because that's my experience I guess the people that come to me for English mentoring it's something that they need but they can get away with what they already have but what they want is to take it a bit further and to really feel confident confident because they, they can manage like I was telling you before they can manage at a meeting but I do believe that work meetings are in, evolving in such a way that you need further um, a further comprehension of the language in a more practical sense, in a more basic sense, even. Just the coffee shop talks are more uh, complicated than meetings at work, right? Mm -hmm. For someone who's learning a foreign language. So I really go with that. So what do you like? What do you want? How do you feel? And then just try to involve English in those activities and make it part of your daily life because this is what I do for myself right no matter what I do there's always that moment in the day where I'm going to be studying English <laughs> it just might not look like it right <laughs> but that's that's what I like about my method it's like uh, it's it's something that you cannot see you cannot tell because it's not explicit like that it's not obvious like that but in the end, I am doing it because I don't watch a show just for watching a show. I just cannot do it. I'm thinking about what they're saying constantly. Mm. So that's why I cannot sometimes watch things that are, you know, full of content because I wouldn't pay attention to the content itself, but to the language. This is why I say that reality shows are something that I watch frequently and that they are probably responsible for my growing interest in learning English, because that's that's what happens to me. It's like I started when I was about 10. I became a Madonna fan when I was 10. I felt that need at that time, but then I, I had no idea what I was doing or when it would end. And then of course, throughout time and studying linguistics and all that stuff, I realized, oh, this is something I'm going to do forever and never get there because where's there? <laughs> right you never it's stop just, learning you never stop it's just unbelievable because of course also language evolves and I focus everybody knows I focus on the American um English part of things and I don't focus on the on the British uh English evolution so much and I I actually could not speak British English I don't think uh because I my focus has always been uh with American English and that's really the thing that I live for <laughs> i can say that so reality shows have been kept me on my tippy toes i would say you know just they, they keep it fresh they keep it current and i really need that so this is like a lifetime commitment i don't know if i'm going to commit to something else like this ever in my life but english is, is something i cannot help it right it's i don't do it for a specific purpose anymore i just do it because i want to and it gives me so much joy and happiness and you know, the fact that I have this tool that helps me develop so many things in life, even for other types of content that have nothing to do with languages, the fact that most of the content that I'm interested in exists in English, usually by American people, then it's such a blessing for me. So I see it from all of these perspectives and I don't see English as a thing for work at this point. And this is how I think that people should if possible for them, if if they find it in themselves, you know, if they look at it like this, that it has 
multiple purposes as any language because my Spanish is something that I also absolutely love. My Spanish is just a big mixture of whatever I learned at college. And then whenever I was in, in Los Angeles and spoke to a lot of Mexican people and then lived in Spain, but never actually spoke to people in Spanish, I would only speak to, in Spanish with probably Argentinian and Mexican people anyway. So it's like my my Spanish is a totally different animal because I, I don't focus on Spanish from Spain or Spanish from here or from there, just wherever it comes from. And I'm just open to it. But obviously my Spanish is a, doesn't have any responsibility in my life. I don't teach Spanish. I don't work in Spanish. Usually I do it if I have to for terminology projects or things like that, but it's my knowledge. It's true that it's there, but I don't, con don't consider it a, uh, a language that I use for my usual day-to-day -day tasks, right? But English is here for all of that. So I have to be at the multiple levels that I need to be. I need to be at a business meeting. I need to express myself. I need to talk about my spiritual life because that's an interest of mine. And I need to be able to also uh, deconstruct a lot of the things that I already know, bring it back to basics so that when I have people in the mentoring sessions, I can actually put myself on their shoes, right? Is, That's why I wanted the, to get back to so I'm glad that you came back to that because I was going to I would you. eventually, right? I went around <laughs> a little bit, but I would eventually. <laughs> you, you mentioned it, but I, I don't know that you've really talked about that. So people won't, won't necessarily know what you do. So tell us about that. What happens <laughs> with the mentoring? <laughs> Wasn't that going to be my my solo episode about? Uh, it's, it's, this is the introduction to the solo episode, uh, and then you can yeah, build on it. I don't know. You you've all seen me on LinkedIn. If you follow us on LinkedIn, that I've been back and forth with Kirsty because we have been talking a lot uh, <laughs> offline too, and we've been you know we just recently had a networking event, and it was unbelievable. I was really happy with it, and I got a bunch of ideas from it. So I guess all of one. this, <laughs> yes, all of this is probably going to change the shape of the podcast because it's always open to to being different as long as the the basics are kept and the only basics that we have is the fact that we need to talk about languages but then again what would I talk about right <laughs> that's the only thing I, I can talk about because that's the only thing that I do so I I do a bunch of things like I told you before that's why I consider myself the language worker this is the reason why I chose the name for the podcast just like that because that's what I consider I do do all sorts of projects that have to do with with applying languages of course translation localization um post editing for machine translation i do cultural consultancy i do english mentoring portuguese mentoring all sorts of things so like i say i don't do i'm not a translator i don't consider myself any of those you know a proper job that you have i'm a translator i'm a proofreader so i i do all of those things if the the project asks for that so I'm always open to doing multiple tasks at a project. So that's what I what I enjoy too. Like the whole variety of managing, of uh, vendor managing to managing projects, being a vendor manager. So all the things that I've done are things that I wouldn't mind just keep on doing forever because I just simply love them. So I guess that's my advantage. <laughs> and that's it. Now going solo for me is my opportunity to fully realize all of those activities. And probably, I guess it's not a secret that my intention is to have some sort of a company going very soon where I can just uh, gather all of these things that I do. And I know that a lot of people do very well and have them on board with me in a full, fully realized project so that uh, I just, you know, I live for this. I and I do this all the time and don't do anything else because that's it don't consider you know other options in life and all of that I'm very open very flexible as long as I am in this corner <laughs> I guess that's how it goes for me so that's it but I, I really don't have things super super uh, set in stone yet so I'll have to play it by ear at the moment. So that's it. I don't, have, I don't have good <laughs> answers for you at the moment. You do. <laughs> it's all <laughs> work in progress I'm doing a lot of things experimenting everybody knows that this whole podcast thing is, is my favorite thing to do at the moment it's just one thing I was postponing for years and years and years and like I say I'm open to you know gearing it towards other things like having people's spontaneous opinions about events that's one thing I'm thinking about all sorts of 
possible content that is not fabricated, right? It's just people's mm-hmm. opinions and people just giving you what they have received and giving it to you from their own eyes and from their own perspective. So it's going to be more and more towards that. <laughs> and I think that's really exciting because that's something that, you know, some podcasts can be very, it feels like people are working from a script and it's, you know, and content that you sometimes you can find online. It's it's not real. It's not human. It doesn't have that. that human I, I can touch do that, that because do. I cannot do it like that because I mean, it's just obvious. I just need to do it this way. And this time I didn't even have one single question for Kirsty. So that <laughs> I no, usually I never have do at that least when I four or five <laughs> questions for people. So this is like a, a new format for the episode. It's like we're just talking as friends and, you know, just putting it out there. If this is our opinion or the way we have lived our uh, language experience at, at so far. Yeah, I think that's there's something refreshing about that as well, because that's what you, we learn, other people learn. And I think it's, I, I relate to what you were saying about, you know, how language is part of your life. Because I think from the beginning, when I started learning German, it was always, I was always reading something or talking to friends or it, it became part of my life. I think when people say they don't have time, we're all busy. We all have a lot of stuff to do. But if you can build learning another language or improving or just mm. having that language as part of your life experience, then exactly. you don't see it as, oh, I have to find time to answer this person in Romanian because I'm going to answer her anyway. So it's not like, oh, I need to find time for Romanian studies today or to, okay, if you have to do something specific for a course, then you do need to make time to do that because if you don't the only person who will be negatively impacted by that is yourself yes but if if it can become part of your life and then finding space for if you've got multiple languages going on finding space for them all because sometimes I was talking to um even though German my German is better than my Romanian I was talking to a a German friend and and the words were coming in Romanian so I I was like, oh, because <laughs> I've been mean, speaking more than many recently. <laughs> and then so giving giving space for all of them to make sure that you allow them all to develop and it's 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 fun. But yes, I'm not like you in that respect. You already know, right? I don't have the, the intention of adding. Um yes, I have the German fantasy, but I just don't see how it's gonna go. So because I don't see how it's gonna go, I just I, don't do it. <laughs> I think you could do it. You, it's never too late. Yeah, it's frustrating, it's annoying at the beginning, like I've already said. But once you get past that, you you I'm very it. emotional. It's not like you know, I have something that I, I could, you know, go for or anything. It's just yes, it's true. I I relate to to maybe the German culture. I have a good opinion on German. <laughs> Find some German reality TV. It must exist. I don't watch it, but there must be something. <laughs> oh my God, that is a great idea. Let's see what happens. I'll, I'll go look for that. Yeah. Because it's just, I, I'm just like that. It's just the, the, the whole being a Madonna fan and then learning English, they just came together in such a way that I could not separate them. You know, Spanish? Like well, with, well the Spanish was just, I, I always liked it. And I like their style because they're fat and because they're blah, 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 blah. And I'm like that, you know? So I feel like it's a language that gives me that opportunity of, you know, expressing myself in that particular way. But the second language that I, well, the first language that I actually studied the most is French, believe it or not. <laughs> but because, and I use it for work, it's true, but I don't identify <laughs> with the language at all. I just can't, you know, and I absolutely hate my pronunciation. And because I cannot get past this and because I don't need more than what I have, because there's no situations or I would, you know, as far as I can see from this moment, I cannot envision anything that would require further knowledge of French because the the knowledge is there. It's just that I don't speak ever and I don't ever have a situation where I could speak it. So it's not unless something happens and I move to Paris or something, which is not something that I'm thinking about, then I don't see uh, how it would be important to me. However, I do have to say <laughs> that I do have um, a preference for the French that's spoken in African countries. <laughs> <laughs> I identify a lot more with that way of talking than with uh, French in France. And I mean standard French because I don't know French, right? I don't know. Uh, uh, I couldn't talk about the differences between Paris and Nice 
because I don't know anything about that. I could talk about that about American English, obviously, because I've been thinking about it and reading about it and studying it, but definitely not for French. I, I only know what the standard communication would give me. So I don't have deep knowledge of the language or in any possible way, except for the grammar. So that's really my specialty. In but I think if the, the passion isn't there, like I, I learned French only at, at school, so five years, it doesn't get you to a really fluent <laughs> standard. But I, and our teacher always brought us hot chocolate at the end of the, the year. That was, that was very good. <laughs> but but um, I think if the, the passion isn't there anymore, like I try to, revive my my interest in Turkish for example I thought you spent all this money on lessons and you, you've got to a really a decent standard of understanding the speaking was the problem and so I went back to it but it just wasn't it wasn't there anymore once you're if you're driven by your interests and your passions in, in learning something or doing something and and you know it's gone it's like a relationship that's over it's like you can't do anything <laughs> about that it's, it's finished now it doesn't matter how much time you invested in it yeah, well, I'm definitely like, like that. that. <laughs> I just cannot do it if there's not a, a very, you know, emotional reason about it. <laughs> okay, Kirsty, I think that's it for our, our first try of a conversation and not uh, a background check on, <laughs> on language industry people. So thank you so much. This was really fun. We're going to do other things, I'm sure, networking and things, things like that, I guess, because it was so good last time. Uh, so I trust you that <laughs> it's a good idea to do it again. And so uh, the world will be seeing more of uh, Rita and Kirsty eventually. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's hope so. Thank you so much. Have fun. Bye. <laughs>